Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing fantastic and ready for another video. So I'm sitting there watching Kelsey Ellison's movie Sisters of House Black for like the second or third time and if you know me then you know I love anything with a prequel feel. I think there's so much that can be done with the backstory of characters, especially Tom Riddle's journey and I've said this time and time again but it's not like we'll ever get the prequels we actually want, which is why I appreciate prequels like Sisters of House Black among the many other fan-made prequels out there. Broad Strokes definitely deserves a mention for their work too. But anyway, while watching the movie, it got me thinking about how each sister went down a different route, a different path for each of them, and it's quite a unique way of looking at the sisters as a trio instead of individually. So that's exactly what I'm going to talk about today, how the Black Sisters' choices sent them on completely different roads that basically outlined their futures from a very early standpoint. So guys, with that being said, grab yourself a butterbeer, get comfy and enjoy today's video. Okay everyone, let's begin. Now, I'm not exactly sure if J.K. Rowling actually intended for the three sisters to form this sort of intertwining triangle, each point being linked to a sister before having their destinies go as far away from each other as possible. I think it's a little coincidental, but also important to note that J.K. wanted a different dynamic for each sister, and I've got to say she did such a great job in the character development of all of them. Maybe she could have shed a little more light on Andromeda, but what's clear is they all went down completely separate paths which is a long way from the closely knitted beginning they all had together. Now there's not much age between the three, a year or two in the difference, but what is a certainty is that they all grew up together in the same house and were loved by their parents. The Blacks may have been strict in accordance to their ideology, but that doesn't mean it showed a lack of empathy on their behalf. Andromeda, Narcissa and Bellatrix originally had a very strong bond. At the time, their sibling love was almost unbreakable because it wasn't highlighted until they were of age how important blood purity and magical nobility truly was. The House of Black lived and breathed pure blood pride. It was pivotal for the survival of the original magical race. Now, we know ourselves as readers that this was a heavily biased stance and it was never ever proven that pure-blooded wizards were more powerful than half-bloods or muggle-borns, but however, it was the family belief and ideology along with several other high-profile families. So all three sisters attended Hogwarts, all were sorted into Slytherin and at the time, and even for a considerate length of time, all three women were completely on board with the expectations that came with their surname. However, something that they didn't share was their personalities which all differed greatly and was basically the reason that all three went upon such different paths. So let's take a look at each individual and analyse how their choices affected their futures. So let's start with Bellatrix. Now Bellatrix had quite a compulsive personality, meaning anything she applied herself to led to sincere and thorough dedication. She went above and beyond to get the results she wanted. Bellatrix was quite academically gifted during her schooling days also, and I don't think that's something that many realise. Bellatrix was the sister who wholeheartedly embraced pure blood beliefs. She was really devoted to maintaining the expectations of her parents and what the name Black represented. So much that she married a man she didn't even love, nor cared much for in Rodolphus the Strange. And that kind of gives an easy read on Bellatrix's personality. She went down the extremist route. Her personality traits were basically multiplied when she met Lord Voldemort. She became obsessively in love with him and vowed to do everything in her power not only to serve him but to impede upon any who tried to stop him and that means killing, torturing and inflicting as much harm as possible. Now this was something not even her parents would have foreseen. In fact it was a little too much as Bellatrix incriminated herself and the surname of Black. 
Though many pure-blooded families supported Voldemort, they did so from a distance, but not Bellatrix. She took it to a whole other level. So as you can see, this was a route that neither of the other two sisters would have followed, as they didn't share her lust for success in the name of Voldemort. Now, that takes Bellatrix in one direction. She ends up doing extremely awful and despicable things, most notably being the torture of the Longbottoms. She's caught, sent to prison, and most importantly, she's happy to be there once again in the name of her master. It's difficult to comprehend Narcissa or Andromeda ever looking at Bellatrix in the same light after the latter committed such horrific crimes. Now, next we have Andromeda, who went so far in the opposite direction to Bellatrix that they might have well been worlds apart. Andromeda, as expected, was originally in support of keeping the Wizarding World pure, especially with her family being such a prominent fixture amongst the Wizarding community, but I honestly feel that was quite a light-hearted approach. If she had met and married a pure-blood wizard, then that's all well and good. But that would have meant that she'd still be in contact with both Bellatrix and Narcissa, which in turn means she may have been asked to join Voldemort, something I don't believe she'd have thoroughly enjoyed. She didn't meet a pureblood or even half-blood wizard. She met Ted Tonks, a muggle-born with whom she fell deeply in love with. Despite early warnings from her sisters, Andromeda still pursued her relationship with the Hufflepuff student, and eventually it came down to choosing between Ted and her family, who made it very clear that they would never accept such a disgrace of a union. Andromeda most likely knew this was coming, and it did. Not only did her parents and sisters not support her choice of partner, but she was disowned and erased from the black family tapestry. Bellatrix was avidly in support of such an act, but I feel it may have weighed heavier on Narcissa, though she'd never let it be shown. However, it wasn't all doom and gloom. Andromeda and Ted built their own life together. They had a child, Nymphadora, who was extremely gifted, and they stayed clear of the fighting. So as you can see, Andromeda and Bellatrix are literally at opposite ends of the scale, but both influenced by love. Then we have the sister who, in my opinion, got it just right. Narcissa appeared to make all the right choices. She found the balance of appealing to and appeasing everyone. Narcissa was not going to marry a man for the sake of it like her sister Bellatrix. She also wasn't going to risk being disowned by her family for marrying someone of impure blood like Andromeda. So she cleverly seeks out both and she finds it in Lucius Malfoy. And man did she strike gold. Lucius had it all and was practically for magical royalty with House Malfoy being a hugely powerful name in the wizarding community. The Malfoys commanded complete and total respect and I'd happily assume that Narcissa's parents were more than ecstatic at the news of their relationship. However, despite all of that, Narcissa genuinely loved Lucius quite a lot. She supported his role as a Death Eater. She supported Lord Voldemort, but she would not become a Death Eater. That was something beyond her desire. She may have wanted to please the right people, but she would not do so. She would not do something she didn't want to do. The two had a child in Draco, uniting the House of Black and Malfoy with another pure blood child. Narcissa really nailed it in terms of everything that was expected of her. She didn't go to the extremities of either sister. She kept a neutral position of favour, but still made it known that she backed her husband as a Malfoy. I think it's a very interesting point of discussion when we think of how the fate of all three sisters concluded after the book ended. Bellatrix, too devoted, too unstable, would lose her life. Andromeda, defying her family for love, ended up losing the person she risked everything for, while Narcissa cleverly played her hand to her favour. She kept her husband, her son, and stayed out of prison. So guys, with that being said, I really hope you enjoyed today's video on the journey of the three black sisters. I found it quite fitting that they all ended up so far apart when they began their life expeditions so closely knitted. Anyway, I want you to let me know your opinion on the matter. Tell me what you think of the face of the three women in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and always, always remember, be happy.
Thank you so much for watching, I truly truly appreciate your support. Everyone, notifications of uploads are more important than ever, so please if you haven't already, turn those notifications on to make sure you're notified the moment my video goes live. Making videos is what I love to do, it's my dream and my passion, however it does cost time and money to produce this content, so if you have a dollar to spare to support me on Patreon, in exchange for some exclusive unseen content, then you can click the Patreon link below or at the end of this video. Please only support me if you can afford it. And make sure to follow me on Instagram at InstaDNJ and on Twitter at Potter Folklore. Check out my other videos appearing on screen and please make sure, most importantly, to hit that subscribe button. Thanks again everyone and please have a great day.